actually um, all classic rock vinyls. Cool. We're recording. <laughs> oh, we're live now. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, let, me, let me see. I think it's, I think it's me, but either way, we got a Zoom audience. Uh, welcome, guys. Uh, today, I'm pretty excited about this because then this is going to be an energy-packed webinar because that's kind of the whole point of it. It's called uh, is it Movement, Momentum, and give me word. Motivation. Morale, momentum and Motivation. So I brought together a very small panel. So I've been doing this a lot, as you guys have seen. I realized that big panels are not as great because you can't go deep. So moving forward, I think we're keeping like under eight, even six, or right now five, six is great. So we can really dive in instead of just a couple of minutes each. Uh, so today, joining us today, uh, why don't you introduce us, Alex? In what, what city are you in right now? What's that background? This is Los Angeles behind me here. Okay, so, cool. <laughs> so uh, hi, everyone. I'm Alex Tu, uh, CEO of Proppy and you know, have a background, um, a former operating partner at Keller Williams and uh, one of the head brokers at Movoto Real Estate. Great, thank you. Um, how about you, Lynette? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I'd love to actually uh, have you share some of your uh, prior companies too that you were doing uh, BC Hunt Partners and My Housing Guide. And then it's kind of interesting to see where you've gotten to now. Oh, sure. Um, 18 years as an agent, now uh, owner, and agent within Abio Properties. Uh, we have an office over in Oakland, Lafayette. And I started, um, contrary to most, I started in online real estate, Zip Realty. Does anyone remember that? So oh, Zip that's hey. awesome. I Herman Chen is me there. A lot, a lot of really great agents have, uh, were bred through Zip yeah. Realty. Yeah, and understanding the power of internet and how to leverage that and how to work a dashboard. They were ahead of the, way ahead of the curve. And, and it was so funny. I had so many naysayers and so many agents saying, why are you doing that? That's the best thing. It's just, it's thinking different. Think outside the box. So sorry, Zip Realty. And then I went to the polar opposite. I went to Prudential, uh, which is, you know, Mason McDuffie, which was the opposite of Zip Realty. So I learned more traditional and uh, a little bit more old school and then went into Highland Partners and Highland Partners and, and brought my best practices from Zip Realty with learning online and the value of online leads and dashboards and working mega volume and a team and bringing that into traditional. And then five years ago, uh, was fully motivated and inspired to open up Abio to build a company that I was excited to be part of. Awesome. I mean, I, I, I've been in the industry for 10 years now. I remember when I first started, what, what year were you doing my, my housing guy? Was that roughly eight? eight years ago yeah uh -huh. yeah i remember when i first started you had one of the best like asian brand you were one of the first agents with their own own website and then own flyer own like just like none of many agents were branding themselves and a company at the same time so i want to give you huge props to that that definitely mm -hmm. i learned a lot in, in my self-branding adventure uh yeah, okay cool let's go to awesome. <laughs> uh elias Hey everybody, I'm Elias Astudo. Um, like Lynette, I actually was the regional manager for Zip Realty for the East Bay and had a team of over 400 agents, managed something like 450,000 leads throughout the Bay Area. So that grit and that knowledge of converting online leads was definitely paramount in my career. Uh, from there, I went to uh, Climb Real Estate and that's how I met Kenny and I was the sales manager for the East Bay for Climb Real Estate. Had an amazing time and, and unfortunately became a free agent manager once the closure of Climb happened. So I'm now with uh, Better Homes and Garden as the Regional Director of Sales and Business Development. So I'm taking that traditional mindset from Caldwell Banker infused with the Climb culture, tech tools, and the future forward thinking and really trying to bring something different, something unique to Better Homes and Garden. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to be where I'm at and um, I'm excited to be on this panel with you guys. So thanks for having me, Kenny. Cool. Thanks, guys. One of those high energy guys we have. Uh, our time with at Climb was great. Uh, hashtag Climb forever. <laughs> All right, uh, Joey, you're up. Yeah, uh, my name is Joey DiBenedetto. Uh, I started in real estate in New York City in 2012. I have a team out in New York. Last last year we closed just under 75 million in real estate sales. And uh, the last two years, I took over Keller Williams Cupertino as the team leader. Last month, about two, five days before coronavirus pandemic hit our state, I took over Keller Williams Palo Alto. Um, and that's where I'm at now. I'm running both those offices. Well, that's the last. So you're, uh, you cover both. Or, so your team's still running, operating, and you're a uh, team there, team leader, but you're the official Keller Williams team leader in this office. So you for both Cupertino and Palo Alto? You got it. Yep. Wow, very, very cool. Um, awesome. Uh, let's go to Wilson. Everybody, this is Wilson here on the peninsula in San Francisco. 
are in a team of eight agents, including staff. We have 13 people. We started property management and transaction management last year. I also coach agents and people who are aspiring to have teams. I am with side currently. We don't have anyone really on a brokerage side, but uh, currently I really run a team model. Um, and I was previously at Keller Williams. And one of the things that I would say we've done really well is really just train my agents. A lot of my agents are really young. However, we've had three of the last rookies of the year and a 30 under 30 within the team. So training and education is key for us and our success. Awesome. Um, so I'm last a little about myself. I, well, you're here, you're on my page. Um, Kenny Trung at ESP Realty joined in January with that client real estate for five years. My favorite brokerage was, uh, at least during that time, had a great experience there and was at Michael James real estate for four years. Uh, right now I have roughly 17 agents on my team. This time last year I had like five uh, and then we're onboarding four more this month. So just like Wilson, I'm really into training and coaching. Um, he has more like fundamental training skills. I'm more like social media and branding um, and more systems and tech for my team. And that's how I'm able to grow my agents, which are all pretty young, but they're all doing really, uh, a lot of them are uh, future stars. Uh, cool. Well, about less about me and let's get right into it. So today we're talking about momentum and motivation. Um, now, what are you guys doing as team leaders, broker owners and CEOs to keep your team motivated during this time? Why don't we start with Joey? Cause you just, you're doing a lot of training classes. I want to hear more about that. Yeah. I mean, our training calendar is, I think, paramount to the growth of our agents and it's also paramount to the culture of our company. Um, if I actually think that this pandemic, this whole shelter in place has provided us the opportunity to offer better training across uh, both offices for the simple fact that boundaries and state lines and all that sort of stuff is no longer a, a, a factor in regards to getting great talent to come and teach. So uh, I would say that training has is, is probably been up to like 100%. We're doing probably eight to 12 classes just from our offices. And then our company themselves are offering another probably four or five classes per day that you can be a part of. So it's training is huge. And of course, it's all on Zoom. So you can literally be uh, in your pajamas on the bottom and a, and a t-shirt on the top and, and get to learn some stuff. It's pretty great. Awesome. Uh, how about you, Lynette? You own and operate a broker of roughly 40 agents uh, in Oakland and Wanda Creek. Like, what are you doing to keep your team together and motivated? Um, well, you know, I feel like, you know, first, we're really listening to our agents. This is the time to more stop and just hear what their needs are or what their concerns are. And most people are pretty much saying, we're so stressed. We're maxed. We're at a wall. No matter where they are in life, without kids or five kids, and it's it's I'm over Zoom, I'm over all this, I have these all these expectations for myself, and I'm not meeting them. But you know, I just feel overwhelmed. And it, it's really we. It was really amazing in the time of struggle. That's when you start to find out who helps and who steps up. And we've been empowering and leaning in on our culture, and that's something. Um, that Danny with the, with the owner of Gramercy, he said, lean on your culture and it's your culture and your core values that you can bring your agents in to help out. So we formed an ABIO council. It's a high council of amazing agents that self-selected and stepped up. And we have these agents that are, are nurturing and engaging each other. And so for us, it's really leaning in on the culture, having leaders that are leading by example, and, and showing that, uh, showing, you know, acknowledging that this is really hard. You know, I saw the analogy of like, I'm, I'm a duck, <laughs> water off a duck's back, but man, am I treading underwater, right? So it's leading by example so that they can have the peace and calm as well to understand that we're going to get through this and trying to let them know and remind them the, um, that, that this is hard, but let's make a list of what is, has been positive. And I encourage everyone to do this, you guys. If you can go after this and just list everything positive that's happened to you in the last month, because there's a pit in my stomach, you guys. I know you're all feeling it too. This is scary, this is unknown, it's unprecedented. And you list the positives, you, you go, wow, this is pretty good. We've been really focusing within, um, leaning in on our agents, but then also giving them um, leaders that are engaging them and motivating them um, to help them change their mindset. So we brought in Marilyn King, which is Think Like an Olympian. I can talk a lot more details around that. And just your mindset and the power of a mindset and how you can change things. And just 
really sharing as well, giving our agents um, the mo more information than less. And I think this is something that we've been hearing and you've been reading in Inman and all of us agents, now's the time to communicate. You should be giving information. Really think it helps. So we've been feeding them with information as well. Awesome. Could, uh, thank you for sharing I that. I couldn't agree with you more, Lynette. Um, you know, having actual mindset. Um, you know, when I, I so right now I, I run obviously a real estate tech company and we have about 35 people. But um, when I was at Keller Williams and when 2008 was happening, I, th I don't know about you guys, but as a broker, I mean, how do you balance when you're dealing with you know, your, the own struggles of a brokerage, having to deal with you know, uh, production, with finances, with all sorts of moving parts, and then still also keeping your agents motivated. So I couldn't agree with um, the panelists more, which is really building that community and you know, having each agent um, and really uh, having a plan, you know, I think what, uh, what I've done with a lot of my team members is really have a plan. Like, for example, you know, what is the, <laughs> what is the plan to, you know, after this? And, and I really think that all the teams and all the agents, like limiting, you know, how much negativity you let into your daily lives, uh, number one, but also having a real plan on what's going to happen. Um, I just had a call with an agent who says that she, you know, they're not even doing uh, price reductions. What they're doing is, you know, it, having all the sellers say, "We'll we'll do it later," and just building up that, you know, pipeline so that you know they're ready to pounce when this whole thing's over. And um, you know, calling and uh, their sphere of influence. So we're all doing that, but I, I think it's hard to stay motivated and be consistent when, <laughs> you know, you don't know when this is going to end. We've been having, I think community is an important thing because we're all community builders and we need community right now when we feel so isolated. Yes. Um, our Slack channels, we've had cookbook, we have a cookbook club and we're contests and we have a, a book club reading shift. And so that's building community. And, um, and we have been challenging our agents. And I even challenge you guys out there to go do um, a 10 second video and just about what you're doing good in your community or mm -hmm. what is it that you're cooking tonight? And these are the opportunities where this is fun stuff that you enjoy, but now you're actually using tools that you haven't used before. <laughs> you're actually going, it's fun for you. You don't have to think about real estate. Let's just set up a video and talk about what you're cooking. Cameron did, and my business partner did an amazing job. You guys should all ask him for his video that he did. But what it does is it gets us out of this mindset of stress, but now we're actually using tools out there that, um, that will help us when we get out of COVID because things are going to be different. And how can we, how can we do, and we're going to need to um, be different and respond different as leaders in this industry because all of us as agents, we're leaders. You know, I love what both of you just said. And, and for me, and I was just thinking about this the other day in a meeting with the team, when this all first hit us, it was easy for us to see all the negatives, right? This how it's affecting our lives and our kids and oh my God, we're at home and finances. And so we were overwhelmed with all of the things that this was gonna, all the ways this was gonna affect us negatively. And then after a week or two, we're, we're, we're stuck with ourself and our thoughts, right? I feel like we're thinking more than we ever have because we don't have all these outside distractions, commuting, team meetings, brokers tours, all the things that we would normally do. So we're left with our own thoughts. And so now you're trying to find a way to organize your life and find a morning routine that's not getting up and going to have coffee and stopping for a bagel. So it's like, what are the agents doing to keep themselves motivated every single day and find that routine, whether it's going from the living room to the kitchen and that's your office, like what does that morning ritual look like? And for me, it's all been about how can we do things differently and lead from empathy? Are we, instead of doing a prospecting hour, hour of power, like do a prospecting hour, call it the empathy hour and just call people. Don't talk about real estate, just simply call people and see how they're doing. And that's the same for me, for my agents. Instead of pushing for production and say, who's got offers, who's got, you know, um, you know, penny transactions. It's all about what can I do to help you? Are you working on your branding? What's your video game like right now? What's your social media game right now? And a lot of my agents haven't really focused on those things. And so now they're forced to do things untraditionally. So like Lynette said, I think that we're going to come out with a bigger skill set. And some of the things that they're learning right now are going to last the test of time. So, um, you know, make, make this time make or break you. And it's our responsibility to lead out in front and show them and work with them. So I totally agree with both of you guys. 
Wilson, where are you up to? I definitely resonate with so much what has said already. And a lot of what has said, it, it stems to being grounded and having a consistent message. So not much has changed in terms of meeting every morning for our team, for the people that are on staff or also our agents. I think every, you still have to have something that's consistently happening in your life, whether it be business or whether it be for family. I think if you're doing everything all at one place, you're eating dinner, you're, you're hanging out with family, you're doing work too, I think you definitely should time block certain things for different activities. So for us, our huddles are still at 8.30 every day in the morning, our whole team joins. We have expectations to talk about gratitude, talk about the wins that we've experienced in the last day or the last week. And also, of course, share some of the things that people are thinking about. Uh, we always ask for feedback. We always have a topic that we want to talk about, whether it's a consistent message that buyers or sellers or some of the things that we've heard in the marketplace, or if it's something that um, objections or uh, other things that people are putting uh, and giving to us that we need to address. And we're problem solvers. And I think for all of us on this call, we have to show up a certain way for the people that we lead, for the people that are working with us. And we have to be grounded and consistent in what we're sharing with them. Otherwise, if we're freaking out, they're probably going to feel a little bit of that and um, it's not going to work too well. Yeah, that's like the concept of, of um, you have to put your oxygen mask on before, you know, you save your family, right? Alex, how about you bring us a little bit of that? Yeah, I, I think um, it, it's so easy. Uh, I, I said that to Kenny right before the call. You know, it's important that, you know, like on a plane, you put your oxygen mask on before you can put it on um, other people. Uh, the, the people that you care for. And, and I think that, you know, with uh, folks doing, uh, you know, homeschooling, uh, you have a team and then, you know, as brokers and team leaders on the call, then you have like hundreds and hundreds of agents that, you know, how do you get to everyone, you know, on top of um, everything else that you're doing? So, I mean, some of the things that, you know, I, I do is, um, I know it's important to connect, but, you know, just as a uh, what I did was I went through and every single day I would call five agents. I can't call everybody, but you know, five, 10 agents having an actual absolute awesome connection and seeing how they're doing and, and, and just going through your roster. I think that is so important. And, and I think the other thing is as brokers and team leaders, we need to accept help. You know, everybody's looking at us for answers all the time. You know, and I think that, you know, one of the things, Lynette, you said that was so brilliant is when, when, when I talk about building community, it's like there are leaders and I can't tell you how therapeutic it is to actually get a responsibility like, hey, why don't you lead this part? Why don't you put this group together for the office? And so that, you know, or whatever it is, it just gives agents not only something to do, but that purpose or that, you know, that push. And and it ends up becoming, you know, contagious, you know, and so, so I've, I had two things to just say, it's uh, number one, <laughs> accept help, you know, build community, accept help, and, you know, and, and, and the rest will go, go on and, and just making, you know, and just don't forget, I think sometimes as uh, brokers and team leaders, we have these big Zoom meetings, and we think, okay, I've talked to everybody. I, I think like to doing like, you know, five or 10, you know, personal phone calls, just one on one with the you know agents that are most important to you, or or, or you know the agents that, are, that that you think needed. And when you get through everyone, believe me, you are going to be remembered. Your agents are going to remember you. Your community is going to remember you. And I think this is a time where it's not just um, you know I think it was Ellie that talked about um, empathy, and I wrote it on the chat. Um, this is a time where it's not hard selling. It is about how you want to be remembered during a crisis. And if you want to be remembered as a person who had everybody had people's back and that was leading, then you're going to be remembered that way. But if you're like just talking about numbers and business as usual, um, then I don't think you're going to be <laughs> remembered very well, which I don't think anybody on this call is like, but, um, but that would be the advice. Open the Q and A. Let me. Sorry, I'm trying to juggle a couple of things. I want to. I want to add to that for sort of the last panel I was on is focusing on yourself. 
first, because if we take care of ourselves as, as agents, you guys, uh, we'll be better leaders because we're leaders in our family, we're leaders in our industry, we're dealing with clients that are really stressing out. And I've, I forgot about that a couple times and I, and I could feel it in my body. So I could tell I was absorbing things were get, I was getting more frustrated faster. So my practices are in the morning and at night, I, I have the app called waking up for meditation. So it's just 10 minutes. And I make sure too that I work out daily or whatever your outlet is, cooking, or sometimes I drink a little too much wine. Um, and well, maybe not sometimes, maybe a lot. But I can say that uh, that going into what you like to refuel yourself, everyone knows what makes you happy. And when our buckets start getting full of all these problems and all these people we're taking care of and all these worries and all these concerns, the bucket overflows. And that's happening to so much of us right now. So how can we regenerate ourselves? And you know, when I hit a moment of a, a stress and angst, I literally will drop and do push-ups. Something about like getting that energy out, or give yourself the permission. Oh, I have this on here. I give yourself the permission to feel. This is a book by a local a local author, Mark Brackett, and it's talking about the importance of emotional intelligence. And us, uh, emotional intelligence, how we can raise our children with greater emotional intelligence. We need that right now. And we also, it's really great for us to really tune into what, how we're feeling. And it's okay to feel that, but maybe not wallow in it. And give yourself the understanding of um, emotional intelligence really helps you be a sales agent for sure. Helps you with your family. Helps you just get on uh, with life. Um, so... So we have all these things we wanna do and we need to do, it's okay. But if you take care of yourself first, then you, you, naturally you're gonna be able to do other stuff. I speak of taking care of yourself first, I think it's really important right now for agents to maintain some type of structure in their day. I mean, you know, where I'm still, I'm making an effort to not sleep too late. Like sometimes just it, you binge on the show, so I'm trying to get to bed before 12 o'clock every day. Every day I wake up at seven. I'm not a morning person. I also don't, don't drink coffee, so that might go hand in hand. Uh, but trying to keep, keep some type of structure so you're not just kind of falling into depression or feeling like your time is wasted. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I think that, I think that it's okay to have some breakdowns through this. And I know that I've had some moments where I'm like, ah, oh, like this is stressful and I miss my girlfriend. And I miss my social interaction. I miss being out. Um, but I know that on the other end of that, there's, there's usually a breakthrough. And so to be able to be conscious of that and, and helping to understand where the agents are at, especially if they have multiple kids and maybe their husband or their significant other has been laid off, there's a lot of stress. And so being, being cognizant of what's happening with breakdowns, but knowing that there's a breakthrough on the other end. Um, what I've done is I purchased this um, high performance planner and I've done more writing and planning in the last couple of weeks than I ever have. So it starts out with the today's message to myself. It's a morning mindset, three top goals and priorities, and then list out everything that I need to accomplish for the day, tasks that absolutely must be done, and then persons that I need to leave and connect with for today, and then my evening journal of how I felt about everything. And this has really helped me to keep myself motivated and keep myself on track and to really stay disciplined with my day because it's tough. You know, my commute is 10 steps. And so this book right here, The High Performance Planner, it's by the Brandon, Brandon Bouchard, who wrote the Motivation Manifesto and the High Performance Habits. This has allowed me to stay on track. And I use a lot of this when I'm speaking with my team as well. If I can speak to that a little bit about motivation, I think one of the biggest things that we found that I've found with agents in general is an, is just a lack of understanding of what winning every day looks like. Like what is what is at the end of the day? How do I know that I've won the day? And so one of the things that we created is a hundred point checklist. And your goal is to just get to a hundred points by the end of the day. And there's a point for making a phone call and 20 points for setting an appointment and five points for uh, reading 10 pages of a book or, you know, 10 points for meditation or whatever it might be. And you can literally just check off the boxes that say, okay, I hit my hundred points today. I won. And we know that the higher point activities actually produce the results. And so if we can do those, hit those points, hit those numbers, then we don't have to stress about like, look, we get into real estate, you don't have a boss, you are the boss. In fact, most people get into real estate because they're tired of having a boss. And so when you get into real estate and now you don't have a boss, now the question becomes, well, what the hell do I do? And 
the answering that question of what I do is going to allow agents to actually let their calendar be their boss rather than time. And so if they can create a calendar that says, hey, even though I'm in a pandemic and I have no clue what tomorrow looks like as of right now, uh, I, I know that I, if I create these three things on my calendar every week, I'll find success in three months when this is over. Because we all know the activities we do today affect us three months from now. And so if we're not doing activities today that produce results, in three months when this whole thing is over and we're back to work, we're going to wonder where our business went. And now is the opportunity for, there's not been a single recession in the history of the world that didn't come back in, in multiples of what it was before. And for those agents who are sitting there wondering if what I should be doing or how do I grow my business or what's my motivation today, your motivation is business three months from today. Like start doing the activities that produce results now so that in three months you can actually have the business you said you wanted because half the agents out there, and you all know this and mm -hmm. anybody who's listening knows this, that 90, 80% of the agents won't do the activities during this time frame, And the agents who choose to actually do the work are the ones who are, whose business is going to explode when this is over. So if, whether it's the journal, whether it's the daily activity plan, whether it's lead generation, cold calls, pop buys, whatever the hell you want to make it in your business, do the activities that you know will produce the results. And then you'll see them when the time comes. Is there a, that's the second time I've heard this week with the hundred point checklist. Is it, can you share that with us later on or drop a PDF yeah. from you? I'll put, it in, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. And then like, I fully agree with you about the, the three month thing too. Like, like in the last couple, in the last month, I have not picked up any new clients. With that said, I had three this week that reached out, like just called by conversation, but I'm not, I'm not worried about the future. I've been putting a lot of effort and work into growing my team and putting these webinars together. I know we'll come out, it's flying. And then like, it's a really tough, it's going to be an extremely, extremely tough year for agents. You know, we had a really fantastic holiday season. I think it was like a short uh, Thanksgiving Christmas thing. So a lot of people were off for like two months and then they barely got back in business this year. They had January, February, and then, you know, shelter in place hits. So I don't, I don't, I think most of the agents have took like five months off, uh, not by uh, choice. So I think a lot of agents are going to have a tough time for the rest of the year unless they really get their act together. I'd like to add to this that um, you guys are talking about action and action is the antidote to fear. And, and we get, I get this, everybody gets this, you get overwhelmed and then you don't even know where to start you guys. And then you just sit back and you just don't do anything. And so uh, I've always loved the Warren Buffett rule where he was, his pilot came to him. Have you guys heard this? His pilot asked him, Warren, you're so successful. Why are you so successful? What is it? What's your secret? He goes, well, let's list everything you need to do. And his list was like, it, it just was a scroll. It just scrolled out, right? We all have our list of our to-dos. And he said, okay, now I want you to highlight, I, I think it was his top three or his top five? Your top three. Highlight your top three. Okay, now that you've highlighted your top three, what is it that you're going to do? Well, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this. I'm gonna do that and that and that and that. And he's like, no, that's where you failed. You only focus on your top three. Once you do the top three, you gain traction and then you move on to your next three. And it's, and it's, and it's the same thing. You, we call it our rocks within the company. What are our three to five rocks that we need to be able to move forward? I can yeah. tell you a couple of things that I've been doing on a personal business side is uh, LinkedIn. I got a LinkedIn coach. And, um, and she is amazing and got a couple hours with her and she, uh, opened up my mind to sort of how we can leverage LinkedIn to build relationships because relationships are, and community are the most important thing. That's how we grow our business. That's the majority of our business are repeat referrals. It's our sphere of influence. And I want to be masterful at nurturing my sphere of influence. This is a way you guys that we can tap in so easily to build relationships and they'll provide scripts. It's actually Deborah Matias. She's uh, connect to clients.com, connect dash to dash clients.com. Uh, reasonably affordable or will come in as a team. And it, it was like, it was so easy to do. And she has lots of great examples on how we can build meaningful relationships. And what does that mean for me? I'm gonna reach out to the attorneys, the multipliers, the people that can have the potential to bring me a lot of business, so attorneys and uh, uh, tax individuals, financial individuals, those that we think and, and realtors that are out of the area that I have great connections with and start dialogues with them. People at home, they want to build network. Let me, I want to help you grow your business. I want to learn more about your business. Let me know when you want to talk. And people want to, if you come from a position of giving and wanting to help, 
or give people a review or, uh, or an accolade, you'd be surprised with the responses on in return. Um, and so the LinkedIn was, was great. And then also I was turned on from Michelle Baylog, this company called Addressable. Uh, Addressable is a startup company where they have robots that will do handwritten notes. And they, um, they will even customize in their smart robots where they can learn your handwriting or you can choose from it. And it was really like just holding your hand and the results are really high. She got seven calls from her farm on listings and um, that she hadn't before where she wasn't getting calls. And it's these special notes and touches. Uh, and that's another way to leverage our time. I would agree. Uh, some of the things I'm doing is um, actually like Kenny, I'm doing a lot of webinars and I got to tell you, like just giving without any expectation of getting anything back and just giving value to, you know, the people that you serve. Um, I mean, I've been getting interviews with people that, you know, I, I didn't think I would get interviews with and just providing content and grew our database by like 3000 people in the past six weeks. And Kenny, you were on my last one yesterday. Um, and so that, that's been amazing. And probably one of the best things I've ever done, I have three kids. I hired a high school tutor for my kids to do it over Zoom. And you know, I have three kids that are being homeschooled right now. And I know that it's something that is on the personal side, but that was one of my rocks. If I could not figure out how to make sure my kids' homework assignments were being done and it was being checked in a way that was affordable. And there was no way I was going to be able to do anything else. So um, very early on, you know, just organizing that and actually <laughs> getting, you know, there's a lot of people who stay at, at home right now who, you know, needs to do some work. And so, um, you know, I, I made sure that happened. So um, I think that was another big rock that it has enabled me to be able to perform at work. Um, is to basically not worry at home because we just don't have any help right now. Yeah, I definitely have a true deeper appreciation for all the stay-at-home parents in the world because I'm <laughs> stay-at-home parenting of a toddler who's almost two years old. And it's so challenging, right, to keep organized and keep, you know, keep focused on him. You don't want to put him just in front of the TV. You want to engage with your team. You want to make sure that you have great Zoom calls and be, you know, connected. And so hats off to all the parents out there that are doing this because I know it's challenging. So um, awesome that you got some help over there, Alex. Well, I, I recently uh, just to told somebody that I feel like the coronavirus is like a newborn. I can't remember the last time I, number one, could not leave my house, um, was constantly cooking, feeding, I had weird sleeping hours, eating food whenever I can because, you know, you couldn't go out and, uh, and sometimes forgetting to take a freaking shower, you know? And so welcome everybody on the call to what a m m newborn uh, infant feels like when you're a new mother. Um, and so I feel like the whole world is experiencing, because I was thinking, I was like, when's the last time I felt like this? It was when I bought a baby home for the first time. And you got weird sleep and you know and you're stressed out and you don't think you're doing anything right um so <laughs> great analogy deodorant sales are down 22 percent in the united states of america so <laughs> you know and, and and i and sometimes you're in the same clothes for like two days so change your clothes you know i've been, I've been making an extra extra effort because i'm on camera every day to make sure i change my clothes and sometimes i go back to yesterday's yesterday video okay i'm good <laughs> so it's I, I had a like that I had a friend of mine tell me that no house was meant to be lived in this much. We're meant to be, we're not meant to get out. We're meant to live. Yeah. Right, right, right. So Cameron, Cameron called the, he's like, we're going to start naming our meetings, the PPP, because I want people to be present. I don't want them to be like, you know, off kind of muting themselves. I want them to be professional. I'm sick of seeing everyone's like dirty hair and we didn't have puns. Let's be punny. So it's called the PPP. We haven't announced that yet. Well, what but was I think it? We have leverage. I'm leverage. typing into Facebook. What, what was the 30? It's being, uh, it was present, professional, pun. Or you, maybe you guys can think something else, but if anyone's trying to apply for the PPP, it's kind of hair pulling, so. Ooh, I like that. Well, I, I, w I will say that, um, yeah, I mean, it's, so remember to change your clothes, take a shower. And, um, and, and another thing, I don't know if the rest of the panelists noticed this, is that, you know, I, I'm in the real estate tech world now. 
it's just the acceptance or the willingness to do things uh, in tech that, you know, uh, a lot of agents, because, you know, we're slow adapters that wouldn't do it before. So, um, you know, de definitely I've seen a lot of that. And I actually think that's for the positive, I, you know, so, um, so that has been keeping me busy and I'm definitely excited about that. I think we have the opportunity right now for technology to be a, a growth indicator. I mean, people we've been, we all use technology in our day-to-day -day lives. Like anyone who says they're, they don't, they're not good with technology is a liar because they probably have a smartphone in their hand that they're calling people with. Um, it's just a natural part of our world at this point. Um, and being involved in this, what's going on has forced us to understand technology at a higher level so that we can still do the tasks that produce dollars in our bank account. Like, mm -hmm. Uh, we used to host trainings in our, I still host trainings in my market center where I'll have 30, 40 people who come and we're proud of how many people are in the room. And then on a Zoom call, we'll have 90 people who show up. I'm like, I didn't even know half these people were alive, let alone, let alone selling real estate, but they're here, they're engaged. And it just goes to show you that there are people who were seeking something more and technology was a great answer to that, that, that quest. We just weren't utilizing it to its potential before. And now we have like, there's no way we go back now to not offering Zoom as an opportunity for all of our trainings because everyone has the opportunity to join. You know what? I love that, Joey, because I think right now agents are going to develop a skill set, a skill set, excuse me, that's going to speak to a different demographic. They might have had one type of person that they communicated to in one way. Now they've opened their demographics to tons of different people. And so I'm encouraging my team every single day. I said, fail every day. Well, what do I make on, what do I put on social media? Like document what you're doing at home, whether it's cooking, whether it's home project, whether it's gardening, whether it's schoolwork, whatever it is, like document your journey and put that out to people because that's what's real, right? Kenny documents everything about his life and his business. And that's why he has so much attraction because it's original and it's real. So I'm telling you like, fail every day. Like not everything's gonna work. But if you have 20 followers, who cares if they like your stuff? It doesn't matter of having 2,000. Like if you have 20 people that are looking at your stuff every day, then cool, put out some stuff that is real to your life. I'll tell you what, when I post videos about my son and it's non-business, people love that stuff. He's at home, he's on my Zoom calls. So like fail every single day and just try because it's not, this isn't just a wave in a period of time where technology is only gonna be used right now. Like Joey said, this is going to stand the test of time. And now we're going to be these multifaceted agents that are trying and doing things in a different way. So we're going to come out of this with a big, bigger skill set. So I, I, I love that what you just said, Joey. Elias, I love you. That was awesome. It's basically, you know, fall forward, you guys. And, and this, and things are going to change. I, I've, I've, I doubled my business in the downturn of the market. It's your mindset. Again, I'm going to say that again. But you know, one thing that's been also really helping is, and this is what Marilyn King shared with us, the Olympian, it says, you need accountability partners. You need a trainer. When you're going in for battle, you need a wingman. So find that person that's on your, that's, that is um, like you or better than you or complimentary or maybe where you can even each other out. You know who you want to reach out to. Ask them if they want to be your accountability partner. People want that. And then, you know, in the morning we did, she had us doing mantras and we all had accountability partners. And what is it that you're going to say to yourself? What do you want to be? For me, it was, I am patient, present, and calm. Everyone with that obvio is nurturing and engaging each other in their sphere of influence. And we did that for 21 days. Cause you know, 21 days is how you create a habit. And, uh, and so it was having that partner helps you kind of keep in track and you guys kind of feed off of each other. So go out there and find someone today. You know, one thing I'll add real quick is it's an even playing field out there, you know, it, and we talked about action, taking action. There are some limitations to what we can do, but what can we do? And I think a lot of the people on this panel have, gave, have given us some good ideas. But if you think about it being an even playing field, if people thought it was hard to be in business when times were good, or maybe they thought it was hard, it's even harder now, right? So the question is, what are these people going to do? A lot of people might leave the industry. I think a lot of people might retire. I think, you know, the agent population, every single time there's a downturn, there's going to be a decrease in lic active licenses, decrease in active realtor subscriptions, right? So that means there's more market share for us to take. The, the dip 
of sales activity might be here, but if we can maintain or take a percentage of market share, I heard Lynette is reading the shift. One of the beginning chapters of the shift is maintaining your market share. So when we get out of this, we have more. So what are you doing differently and what are you going to consistently do that's going to help you do that? However long this is going to be. And that's the exciting thing. It's an even playing field. Speaking of shift, I know that some of us are all from KW. I think I'm the only one who's currently at KW. Um, if you want a copy of that book for free, send me an email and I will send you a PDF version of it so you can have it and read it. It is, I don't care if you're in commercial, residential, I don't care if you're brand new or have been selling real estate for 50 years. It is one of the best books to read right now with what's going on in our market. I'll send it to you. I'll put my email in the chat. Do you have Gary Keller's permission for that? He's the one who sent it to me. So yeah, I think I do. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. I mean, um, so I mean, we are team leaders. So, yeah, I'm interested because you guys have been a K, like a couple of you have been KW. What's KW uh, doing on a national scale or regional um, to support your agents right now? I think, I think that's, is that, uh, actually, that you only yeah, was, yeah. Cody, you're the only one that's still there. Although I was okay. there. For yeah, well, I'd we'll love to hear what Alex uh, during the last crisis did too. Like, it's interesting because I'm, I'm curious what national what companies nationally are doing on a national scale. Yeah. So I'll go quick with this. Cause I think it's, uh, I, you all said this earlier, but who, who we are shows up in moments like this, right? Who we are as a company, who we are as leaders, who we are in, who are, where our culture lies, what our values are. It shows up when things get difficult. And I, I'm someone who enjoys these sort of changes. I like getting involved in this sort of stuff, like that things get changed, that things adapt for us because I think it's opportunity for us to take territory. Um, so the first conversation, everybody on this call, whether we're a team leader or not, is looking for leadership. Like everybody's looking for someone above them to help guide them through whatever it is they're going through. And it's the same with agents and their clients. Your clients are looking for leadership from agents. And it's just a matter of, do you have the information at hand to be a great leader for your clients at that time? And so we're getting guidance on lease, uh, you know, uh, negotiating our lease terms. We're, we have attorneys on hand. They've, uh, they've actually offered free MAPS coaching for anybody who signs up for the next two months. They've waived all of our fees that we pay to Keller Williams. Um, they've advised our offices to eliminate our fees for the next three months completely. The only fee that people still pay is their technology fee because that's still operating at a, at a really high level. Um, we reduced rents by 100% for free for two months until we get situated. Uh, I think it, when you, when, Keller Williams is just like diving in. They've invested $20 million into continuing coaching and training. Uh, they started that p uh, pivot shift ahead Facebook group that has like 70,000 members right now doing online trainings on a daily basis. I, if I'm looking for leadership, like I'm very, very happy with who's above me, who's, who's pushing down on me what we should be doing because it is all about what we've been talking about. I know we're all doing, which is putting our people first, making sure that, that, it, we're coming from contribution, that we're providing a ton of value, and then also just making sure that people have the tools that they need in the market of the moment to continue to grow their business. Awesome, thanks for sharing that. Uh, yeah. Karis, uh, Elias, she, so you cover uh, Sacramento, East Bay. How many agents do you guys have, roughly? So um, I cover the East Bay, so it is oh, okay. um, Walnut Creek, Tri-Valley, and then Oakland. Um, so it's about 140 agents right now and obviously growing. So we've done 50% of the monthly fees that are due or doing that until the end of shelter in place. Um, and then we're rolling out, we just rolled out a, an agreement with the virtual tour cafe. So uh, we have some, you know, discount prices for our agents and just really finding ways to help them if they need business cards and we need to, you know, supplement that cost, we will. And so um, I think the agents are really grateful that, that we're not charging our monthly business fees. So we're just doing everything that we can. And, right. you know, I'm curious to see how this all pans out after, you know, um, coronavirus and shelter in place, that if more companies are going to try to lead more towards like a, a virtual environment. And, and so I'm curious to see how this is all going to pan out because it's been a shift, not only for us as an agent level, but from an, a company standpoint, like, what are some things that we need and what are some things that we might not need um, that agents can do on their own or, or outsource or use Canva? And so 
curious to see how this all pans out, but we've definitely, um, you know, reduced our monthly fees for all of our agents across all regions. I actually think that this is a huge, huge opportunity for team leaders and everyone um, right now. I think it's like the best time to, and I know it's not popular, but to recruit, you know, and you don't do it in a slimy way. I mean, think about it. I, I, if you're in a position where, you know, after this pandemic, you, you know, you're still having to grow your company. There's a lot of, you know, brokerages that are not going to make it. Uh, you know, in this next, you know, few months. And um, I know that, I, I know it's not the same, but like in uh, 2008 and 2009, I mean, we lost a bunch of agents, but, you know, I was, we were recruiting so much because we were still, you know, we were cutting our expenses. We were doing all these things to make sure that our team uh, stays motivated. But I also think that, you know, at times like this, like the reality is there's projections that at least 5% um, of uh, fo the folks are, are brokerages are not going to make it. So this is the time where I think a lot of team leaders should go through and see, you know, the numbers of, you know, maybe some other, some teams or people that you can start conversations with and you don't say, hey, I want you to come, but give them information, be helpful now, you know, and, and uh, reach out and see how they're doing. Uh, because I, I really believe that there are going to be teams that are not going to make it and they're going to be looking to the people who talk to them when it was hard. And think, so that, yeah. yeah I think all, all of us are team leaders, broker owners, except for you, Alex, and we're always constantly looking for really strong talent. Mm -hmm. Two people just DM me during this webinar asking uh, for a meeting to join my team. So I gotta tell you, like putting out these webinars, like yet the more you give, the more you get. I can't exactly measure yep. that, know what I'm going to get, but I can tell you, I've already had 10 meetings, one-on-one -on -one Zoom call meetings with agents that are interested in joining my company. Yep. And my, mostly my team, and then it's just coming and coming because the more you get, people are looking for people who can lead, who are doing it, and not just saying and talking, right? They're actually wake, they're actually performing and doing the things that telling other people to do. But, but but Kenny, that's exactly it. You're not asking people to join your team. You're just giving value, and that's what I mean. That this is a time to you know do you know precisely that. And 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 I and the other mistake that I see a lot of brokers do is they only talk to their own people. And, you know, so reach out, go to the broader, you know, uh, brokerage community because, you know, if you and, and, and just be of service and um, without any expectation. And I, I think, you know, what you're doing, Kenny, which is where I saw a lot of teams and a lot the most successful team leaders in uh, the last downturn. That's exactly what they did was they just didn't stay within their group because as the group shrinks, they, um, you know, they really just were able to you know, take care of the agents so that they can go out and tell everybody how great their brokerage is, but also be of service to people outside of your own company. Yeah, because a lot of agents are missing the sales leader. Uh, there's a missing manager or sales leader or broker just, yes. just because, right, they're, they're in the uh, brick and mortar environment. So now, like, anyone can step up to be any role that you feel fit. If you're, if you're really strong in marketing, you want to share that, I think, great. If you're a good coach, like Lynette, like, with all our other cool stuff she's just taught today, then share that. Elias, you know, like you're, you, you're a high performer. Well, you're not locked up just your office. Share that with the world. I think yeah. now, like, cause I was, I was just thinking last week, this is really weird to be talking about this much real estate on my personal Facebook page. And you guys know, look at my Facebook. I've never used Facebook for years. I've been an Instagram guy, but now like coming, coming out of this, this could be a regular thing. Like I can just get a bunch of people together and talk openly about real estate all the time, you know? And then I think people will be, will be more open to it now more than ever. Yeah. Well, I, and then the, I'll add one last thing, which is one of the biggest, I, in one year, I think I recruited about a hundred agents um, in the, one of the worst, worst economies. And it was because, and, and I can't tell you how many of them said the reason why is because you talked to me more than my own broker did, you know, yeah. when it was really, really bad. And yeah. it is so true. And if, and so I would just encourage if you're a team leader, if you're a manager, I'll put my thing. I have stuff that I was doing back that I can send you and, you know, just, just do that because you're going to, you're going to benefit and you know what, you're helping people. So it's going to feel good at the end, no matter what. I what I see is winning right now. And sorry about that, Lynette. What I see is winning right now and particularly for Kenny and it's working for myself and it works for agents. So it's, it's attract, not sell, right? We want to emerge as a more empathetic industry and not opportunistic from an mm -hmm. agent side as well as from the manager side, right? If I'm calling to simply recruit you, it's a little different of the feel versus saying, I, I heard about the furlough, just wanted to make sure you're okay. I know you've been at Redfin or whatever the case is, right? So 
we can lead from a different position here. And so I have a weekly session. It's called Basecamp. I started at Climb and now I do it at BHG. And in two, two and a half, or excuse me, three sessions, I had 220 people just attend. And it wasn't just my people. I invited the community. So if you guys are doing cool things at your brokerage um, and, and you, we want to open it up to the community, it's just going to let them know like, wow, they weren't closed off and closed minded to sharing with the community. They opened up their home, they opened up their doors and they shared what they have. Obviously, if it's proprietary information, we're not going to open it. But I'm getting so much cool feedback saying, thank you for letting us join Basecamp. I appreciate it. Great information. And then down the road, it allows me to have that conversation about their brokerage, where they're at, changes, growth, and things like that. So um, attracting, not selling has been totally working for me. So love what you're doing, Kenny. I, yeah, I want to I want to add to that, that this is the time for you to really evaluate what drives you as an agent. And are you happy? Are you happy where you're at? What, you know, you need to have passion plus vision plus action to have exceptional results. And have passion, are you happy in the brokerage or the team leader or where you're at? And that's something where Jason Abbott, he's over in Florida, um, part of my mastermind group, he had a team and it was the most successful team, but he was unhappy because they were just all toxic. They didn't fuel him. He literally got rid of everyone and everyone thought he was crazy. And he built his team around people that he wanted to be part of. He couldn't be happier. So it's sort of like what fuels you? There's enough business to go around, interview and find different brokerages that offer what you believe in because there's a different flavor for everything. What's, does it fit your core values? Do they have the skills? Do they have the training? Do they have the tools? Um, and versus just do they, do they walk the talk? So um, I, it, it is a great time while you're sitting there trying to figure out where do I fit? Where am I going to come out? And that's something I'd love to talk Kenny too is I don't know a panel on what is this going to look like post COVID? How are we going to be operating? What does this look like? What is our, the, what is our business now going to be? What is it that we're doing right now that we're learning that maybe we don't want to drop? I mean, these virtual brokers tours have been pretty amazing where all of a sudden we have over a hundred people listening to your one house that you're, you're promoting versus just 10 to 20 that would come on in. Just, I'd love to discuss that. No, we definitely, I mean, moving forward, I'm trying to do more interesting webinars. We might not have as big of a crowd, but I want the content to be more in depth, which I think today we've, we've accomplished. Um, how about you, Wilson? Uh, let's, let's do this and wrap up at 105 ish. Wilson, what, you know, you're with Side Real Estate, it's huge respect for your brand. You guys have some of the best agents, top producers, like business builders in a lot of the markets. So a huge property, you guys. Uh, what, what side, what is Side doing on a national and a corporate level to, uh, you know, motivate the agents and keep them to keep their businesses flowing. Yeah, specifically side is they still right, have that is a terrible picture. <laughs> side is still helping their partners and they, <laughs> uh, with the partners, of course, um, advising on numbers, what other partners are doing. Uh, there's a lot of top agents that are sharing ideas. And one of the things that you had mentioned earlier about what big brands are doing, you know, some of us, I don't know who came from KW, but I was lucky enough to sit in a room with Gary Keller and, and on several occasions where he would talk to top agents around uh, the nation. And one of my key takeaways from that was he said, no brokerage team model, no coach is going to fix, fix a shitty business. And what he meant by that was a shitty business is one that is not profitable. You are seeing a lot of companies getting exposed right now that are shitty because they're not profitable. They are based on revenue run rates. They are not positive. So when some, something like this happens, they have to furlough, they have to lay people off. And that's a lot of these sometimes tech companies that are running really fast because they want to grow, but the core model is not profitable. And as much as I'm not at KW right now, KW is private and it's profitable. And that's why it works because they have reserves to be able to survive something like this, where they don't have to let go of certain people because they don't have the revenue to run. So if there's any takeaway from this, if there's something that I've learned from them is keep reserves. I could spend a lot on marketing. I could spend a lot more on staff. I could spend a lot more on many things and throw stuff on the wall to see what sticks as they say, right? But I think being grounded and understanding that if you're in a for-profit business, be profitable. You know, don't follow the top agent just because they hosted a $100,000 event that looks really nice, but is it really working? Is there an ROI for that? And that's hard to say unless you ask them, but sometimes they're not gonna tell you the truth.
I think moving into the future right now, like not just in the real estate, uh, real estate business space, but just money in general, VC funding, everyone is super, super tight with their money and everyone's at a loss. Everyone's near bankruptcy. I mean, it's crazy, right? Even Ruth, Chris Stayhouse and all these big companies are getting PPP money. People got to be very extra cautious with where they're spending money and moving forward. Like it's, it's not just grow at all costs. I, I've done that my first couple of years. That's why I was able to grow pretty fast. It wasn't very profitable, but you know, I was able to land here and now all my costs is like I've cut down to what I need. Uh, but now I think businesses, a lot of them will thrive and a lot of them just unfortunately won't make it or, or they'll change brokerages and change to something cheaper or better or like, or it needs to get more value because they can't survive. Right now it's, uh, it's a reality check for agents, team leaders, brokers, companies to really see what their value is and what the profit is. I think well, that, uh, that anyway, any last comments? We want to wrap this up. It's one o'clock. I know some of us have to run. Uh, Joey. One more thing. Yeah, I, I think the the amazing thing about the conversation we're having here with the six of us, which are obviously all trying to do this, is that just because you're a manager and a broker doesn't mean you're a leader. And what's required today, like managing a brokerage is the bare minimum of the requirement to be a manager or a broker. Like I have found, and I'm sure you all have found that most brokerages allow their agents to be successful. They do not support them to be successful. And there's a really big distinction between allowing an agent to do their thing and supporting an agent to do their thing at a higher level. And right now, this, I, I can, it's clear that the six of us are working to support our agents and support our people and support our business to be successful. The rest of these people, if your manager is just doing the bare minimum to get by, you need to get the hell off of that, of that manager's roster because you deserve more because you didn't get into business to pay your broker's salary. You got into business to actually pay yourself at the end. You know what I mean? And if your broker's not helping you put more money in your pocket, then get the hell out of there. Like back to something I said earlier about like, you know, play, playing new roles. If you're a really top team, there's like, like, you know, you were, uh, at, you came from New York and now you're in, and running at West, West coast. I mean, some of us team leaders are stepping into like a broker role and a sales manager yeah. role and a team leader. And we're still selling real estate and we're still doing our marketing. Like the ones that are really able to do that, they're able to showcase their skills. And those are, I think those people are going to be ones that be, will attract really big teams, uh, future. And they, they will, they're not just growing because they want to grow. They're growing because they're attracting people who want to be in that culture and that environment. So, yeah. People who want to grow see when other people don't. They, they want to be people who are competitive, who want to grow, who want to have big businesses, want to be surrounded by people who want to grow, want to have big businesses. And if you're not in that environment, if you're a representation of the top five people that you hang around and the people you hang around are, are not people who are interested in being better than where they are right now, then you're certainly not going to be in a group that gets you better to where you, than where you are right now. So find a different group. That's why I got to find with you guys today. <laughs> cool. Any last statements? Oh my God! Any uh, any last statements before we wrap this up? You know what? I heard something the other day, and it said, "If you want to learn how to surf in this market, then start paddling now." Like people need to start their momentum. And Kenny, you said this one day, and it always stuck out to me. After this pandemic is over, do you want to start out on the freeway, or do you want to start out back on a stop sign? Do the work now. Do the marketing and start planning now. So post coronavirus you already have momentum, so you're not starting from scratch again. So I just wanted to say thank you for having me on and thank you guys for all your insight. I really appreciated this today. Awesome, Alex, Lynette, any last uh, statements? Thank you. We got, we got to get on yeah, another one too. And you then, guys want to pick my, anyone on that, that is here listening, yeah, I'm an open book, you can reach out anytime. Yeah, if you guys are watching this, like I'm putting more of these together, I want to slow down a little bit, but we're going to do like hyper niche Things like we have something coming up on like teamers model, team leaders that are running brokerages and teams. I'd love to get one with Lynette on what the future looks like. But if you guys can think of any cool topics, uh, let me know. We we'll just put one together. It's not hard. To, we just get get the right cast. Um, cool. Then, um, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll see you on the next one. I think there's one tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday, and Wednesday and Thursday. Thank you all. Bye.